This is the story of the reincarnation of Kyabse Song Rinpoche, a great spiritual master from Tibet. Tibet has always held a fascination for the rest of the world as a land where living masters kept alive a unique form of Buddhism based on love and compassion. In 1959, China invaded Tibet, and Rinpoche, together with thousands of other Tibetans, sought asylum in India. He shared with other monks the hardships of Buxa refugee camp, where his inspired teachings rekindled and kept Tibetan Buddhism alive in the students of Sera, Drepung, Gendon, and others. He was appointed by His Holiness and the Tibetan government, principal of the teacher training program in Missouri, and later, first principal of the Institute of Tibetan Higher Studies in Sarnath. When he completed his term of office there in 1970, his successor was Samdang Rinpoche, who holds the post to this day. Rinpoche then moved to Gandan Monastery in South India, where he devoted the latter years of his life to teaching on Sutrayana and Tantrayana. He began to travel outside India when people from the West requested him to teach Buddha Dharma. He went to Britain, Switzerland, Germany, Canada, and the USA, where Rinpoche's skills at combining scholarship with spiritual realization gave him a unique ability to inspire Western Dharma students. Kyabse Song Rinpoche was holder of extensive lineages passed from master to student since the time of the Buddha, and these he disseminated widely. Zuzi, <laughs> Nectars enter into the our body to reflect. When he finished action of the Dharma with his students, and in order to show the impermanence of life, he decided to dissolve his physical manifestation for the time being. On Thursday, the 15th of November, 1984, the anniversary of the Buddha's return from Tushita, Rinpoche went to his sitting room and asked to be left alone. Seated in meditation posture, he then dissolved his physical manifestation. When the stupa was opened five days later, relics and two small footprints were found on the base mandala. These signs reaffirmed the faith of the grieving disciples and offered them hope for his swift return. Rinpoche's relics are then brought back to his room where the monks perform various self-initiation rituals such as Haruka Bodhi Mandala, Vajrayogini, Guya Samaja, Yamataka, and Chitmani Tara. In 
1988, a lama who manifests as three different protector oracles was asked about the new incarnation of Kyabche Song Rinpoche. Coded Sanskrit verses were given by the oracle, indicating that Rinpoche has been born in the year of the ox and that the child's birth name was Tenzin Wangrak. Tenzin Wangchuk, Rinpoche's administrator, then spent a year crisscrossing India and Nepal, conducting surveys with 500 mothers and their sons, seeking Rinpoche's new incarnation. In a special prayer to the Three Jewels, a qualified master, together with the assembly of monks, did a special divination ritual with names contained in balls of dough that were rotated in a cup and the list narrowed to 31 candidates. This list was given to His Holiness the Dalai Lama who performed the final divination, confirming the child's identity as Tenzin Wandruk of Kulu. Tenzin Wangchuk returned to Ginzen and packed a golden hat and robe as well as Rinpoche's ritual objects. A recognition party consisting of Geshe Tsongcha who had come from Tibet with Rinpoche, Sherabla, Rinpoche's new attendant, and greeted Jensen, a Western Dharma student, set out for the Kulu Valley in the Himalayas. Yeah. Arriving at Rinpoche's home, Rinpoche greeted the party, and in an auspicious recognition, immediately blessed Sherabla. Auspicious offerings are then made to Rinpoche by the recognition party. Rinpoche must choose which rosary is his. And which bell is his? He does so perfectly, even grasping the bell in the left hand and playing it.
A few weeks ago, I had a dream which I want to tell you about. I dreamed as I was standing by a river which was falling down from the Himalaya. Outside the house, a child was playing and laughing as he played. He had a strong feeling that his children child was our Rinchi. He seems very special and full of golden light. I have never been to Manali, but I have seen photos of the area, and I wonder if that is the place I saw. I include drawing of my lad, my dream. This is a drawing picture from Greta Johnson from England. The next day, a visit is made to the house where Rinpoche was born, which Greta Jensen had seen in a dream three years previously. Rinpoche's mother dreamt of being blessed by His Holiness the Dalai Lama and being visited by an elephant. She said Rinpoche would play at the local monastery and say he had a monastery with many wonderful toys which he would return to in the future. The Kulu Valley is sacred to Haruka one of Rinpoche's meditational deities, and local people refer to it as the Valley of the Gods. Young Rinpoche prepares to leave Kulu Valley for Manali Monastery and blesses the local inhabitants. Waiting to greet him are Lati Rinpoche, Sharpa Choji, Zopa Rinpoche, monks, nuns, and Western students. Lati Rinpoche performs a purification ritual to remove any negativities young Rinpoche might have absorbed from others in this life. the vase to his father while uttering blessings. He blesses Tenzin Wangchuk with the consecration vase.
He is given the offering of the robe ceremony and is dressed in new robes as a monk. Seated on the throne for the first time for more than two hours, he receives guru yoga and long life prayers from the assembly. He is offered a mandala of world systems and symbols of enlightened body, speech, and mind. His first attempt at playing the Damaruan bell show remarkable dexterity. Without a doubt, this is Kiabse Song Rinpoche. Twenty days later, Rinpoche travels to Dharamsala for his first audience with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. His Holiness performs the hair cutting ceremony.
Nipshe visits Shartse Kansan, an extension of Gandhan Shartse, his monastery in South India. He is received by Lati Rinpoche, Sharpa Choji, and Geshe Tsultan Gelsen of Tupton Darjeeling in Los Angeles. In a special ceremony, Rinpoche was offered a mandala by all these masters and other representatives. Rinpoche then pays a visit to Kyabche Ling Rinpoche, the former senior tutor of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and Rinpoche's spiritual teacher in his former life. After they formally greet each other, there is time to renew their friendship and play.
Next, there is a visit to Kiyapshe Trijan Rinpoche, the former junior tutor of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who in his previous life had been Rinpoche's closest teacher and friend. They reestablished their connection in this life. In the presence of the two incarnations of His Holiness's tutors, young Song Rinpoche related to them with the greatest respect. His final stop is to receive blessings from Kyabche Rato Rinpoche, retired abbot of Namgyal Monastery. Rinpoche says his goodbyes to Dharamsala. And now, it's a two and a half day train ride to South India. Arriving in the junction town of Hopli in Karnataka, they are received by officials of Gandan, Drepung, and Sera monasteries, and in a motorcade complete the one-hour journey to Gandan Monastery near Mungad. Arriving in Gandan, Rinpoche is greeted by over 2,000 monks and nuns.
he makes three prostrations before the whole Gendon Monastery. Then he is carried in procession to his predecessor's residence, Song Lebron. Appearing at ease in his old room, he plays with the table clock he originally bought. His oldest living student comes to receive his blessings. They had left Tibet together in 1959. In Rinpoche's personal prayer hall, the three monasteries and Tibetan settlement officials make a grand long life offering. Even Kensar Jampa Yeshi offers a long life mandala and the eight auspicious symbols. 
It is even attended by Tibetans from as far away as Kham and Amdo in Tibet. Rinpoche is relaxed on his throne for the first offering to his protector. Showing the nature of his predecessor, he demonstrates his skill at playing the cymbals. Rinpoche begins his daily prayers with offering a mandala and requests that all living beings live in peace and happiness and have the blessings of the lineage gurus. On Kyabshe Song Rinpoche's last trip to America, he had, to the amazement of his attendants, 
entered a department store and bought two suitcases full of toys. When asked why, he replied, keep quiet, you would not understand. Now, the purpose is quite clear. <laughs>